Hey kids, it's Justin James from Stress Explains, looking at the dinosaurs of Britain. You're like, what? What's going on? We're not doing one species? Yeah, today's a special video I'm doing in honor of a friend of mine named Hunter. Him and his fiance Sarah have gone to Britain to do research and study and get more degrees, and I'm saying thank you to them. Also, um, if you like this idea of doing a, a region instead of just the species, let me know in the comments. But more important than that, I'm doing this because I want to thank both Hunter and his fiance Sarah, but also you, my fans, because... I'm talking into a camera, and that's weird for me because, you know, how narcissistic can you be to be on your YouTube? But the idea is that when people are in public and they see me and go, hey, Dresser, that really means a lot to me. And Hunter's one who did that. He watches my videos. He went on my website and saw all the different parrot critters I put up there and label all the different toys I've modeled and everything. And to give you an example how this is to me, personally, it matters to me, is that one day I had a very... Uh, stressful outreach. A lot of young, young kids are very hyperactive. So I got to, back to the museum. I was very tired. I was pushing the car to fossils. And I was just really, really, not defeated, but I was like, oh, I'm so tired. And so the elevator opens up, and these two ladies come on. And I'm like, oh, you're Jurassic James. And I say, oh, okay, do I, do I know you? And they go, no, 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 we just watch your YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, that is so awesome. And so that made my day. I was super excited. So when Hunter, uh, you know, he's such a fan, so I wanted to do a video, because him and Sarah are going, are in England, so I wanted them to see or know what could be in their neighborhood. Now, that being said, we're going to start with the first dinosaur. You know how Captain America is the first Avenger? I always call Megalosaurus the first, Megalosaurus the first dinosaur. Now, I have not done a video on Megalosaurus yet. I've hinted at it in other videos because Jurassic World is coming out with a Megalosaurus figure sometime this year or next year. So I wanted to do them all together and get as many figures as possible. Uh, another fan named Jim Connor asked me to read off, when I do this, I read off the labels for reasons, to so you know what they are if you're a collector like him. This is a 2009 Collect A. This is a 2020, and it says no company, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's probably Collect A, looking at the, the form. So again, same animal, Megalosaurus. The reason I call it the first dinosaur is it's the first dinosaur named that we know, by scientists, that we know was a dinosaur and all that. We named it before we knew what dinosaurs were. So the name Megalosaurus means big lizard because you find these bone fragments at least the jaw go, well, it's really big, and it's clearly a reptile, so it was Megalosaurus, big lizard. Uh, and that's the name, right? It wasn't until later on when the, the, the term dinosaur was coined by Richard Owen. Now, here's why it's important. You may have also heard of Iguanodon. I'm sorry, that joke's not going to die. So Iguanodon, uh, one of my top three favorite dinosaurs, it's really important to me. And so Iguanodon is another one, and then also there is one, this guy here. Oh, sorry, this is a Popo. So they never put it, and Popo, if you don't know, P-A-P-O, they never put a name or a year on the, on anything. Uh, it just has a, like a company mark. And I always imagine that Popo being higher end, of, you know, they're like, you should know what it is. If you don't know what it is, you should, you should have to ask kind of thing. Anyway, uh, the third one is one I've never done a video on, never really mentioned before, so it's kind of important. This guy is 2009 Collect A, and the name is spelled H-Y-L-A-E-O-S-A-U-R-U-S. Uh, I would say Heliosaurus. This is a Notosaur. Now, you've heard of Ankylosaurus, right? So the Ankylosaurus have... People think of them as the ones with club in their tails. There's a branch of the family called nodosaurs without clubs. That's what this guy's uh, grouping. They are not the scale to each other, but these three dinosaurs are the ones that Richard Owen coined the term dinosaur with. Meaning that people for people say, why did we find dinosaurs just 200 years ago? Like, why the, the, the name dinosaur coined in 1842? We knew about these giant bones all over the world, and many people had different cultural ideas and interpretations and things, but... Richard Owen was the first to say, no, these are secret reptiles. We have three different specimens, not complete, but enough to know that these are things. That's made sizes and say, okay, this is a new group of animals, called, and we're going to call it dinosaur. Dinos, dinos in Greek meaning terrible, source meaning lizard. So you've been hot before. If you're from Texas or anywhere near Texas, yes. If you've seen a dog before, well, the word hot dog does not mean what it's, it should mean, like a dog that's hot. It means the, 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 the wiener and buns and the, and the ketchup and all the stuff. So the idea is that the word hot dog is a new word, where there's dinos and saurus in Greek. Terrible and lizard, dinosaur, right? So these are the three that, that were named there in England. Now, as an English-speaking person um, who is not as good at understanding other languages, <laughs> that's awesome, because paleontology, a lot of the nomenclature, the names we use, started in England, so or Britain. And so that being said, we're going to move forward to another animal of importance. First of all, this guy here, Synthosaurus. There are two models here. First is the um, British Museum. These are only on eBay at this point. They don't make them anymore. And so they're like these kind of like the scale models. This one here is Collect A 2008. 
And so Synthosaurus is essentially the first sauropod really named. And then Synthosaurus, if you know, if you study whales, they, they're called, in dolphins, they're called cetaceans. It means, you know. So, like Richard Owen saw these giant bones, he couldn't understand, he couldn't believe an animal with bones that big could walk on land. It had to be some marine reptile. He knew it was a reptile from the bone structure and shape. Good on him. But I want to point out that we, of course, today look back at early paleontology and go, how can you think that was a whale? It was clearly a sauropod. Remember, we don't know what sauropods are back then. Uh, you know, it's like when you look at history, well, why didn't they do it this way? We know this is going to work out. We know that now, but they didn't know back then. And so for him, they're finding these new bones. Well, these not new bones. They're finding these bones, and they're trying to figure out what they are. And so he's like, well, it's clearly a reptile's bone, but it's giant. And, of course, we know today the bones are hollowed out, and they're, and, you know, the sauropods are very lightweight. They're heavy, but their bones are hollow, so it helps them move, be more light than they should, actually. If they were mammals, they couldn't move, right? If we had mammals the same size as these guys, it was, you know. And speaking of size, this guy is 65 feet long, roughly. And the idea is that to you and I, like, that's pretty small for a sauropod. You know, th you're thinking about Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus and Argentinosaurus. Remember, those guys aren't known in science yet. This is one of the earliest sauropods, if not the earliest or first sauropod named or known. So that was a giant animal. No one ever thought of a 60 foot animal on land. That was just bizarre. And so, of course, today we're like, huh, old news. Back, but back then it was a really big deal. So the next one we'll go over is a pterosaur named Amorphodon, made famous by Jurassic World. Uh, the the non tranodon pterosaur you see flying around, the little, little guys. These are from early Jurassic England, and I have a number of these actually. I should probably do a video at one point, but I, I guess I'm not like super excited about pterosaurs, so I'll I'll do a video if you guys ask for it. But with the pterosaur, of course, were tranodon, of course, the koalas, the later ones, are these long geese, you know, like that. The earlier ones had different shaped mouths, they had different kind of different diets that way. Uh, the hands you see here, like pterosaurs, like us. Well, not like that. They, they lack a pinky. And the first three, like these three fingers, are the fingers you see right there, the claws on them. So those are just the three main. The, the ring finger is this long bit here. That's the actual the wing, right? So really interesting little animal on its own, right? Next guy we have, and this is early Jurassic, this is a Scylatosaurus. Now, what's important about Scylatosaurus is that it's an early member of the arm. It's the first, one of the first Armadonosaurus. I'll say it this way. It's often believed that in the Jurassic we had stegosaurs, not stegosaurus, stegosaurs, one of one species around the world. And at the end of the Jurassic, all the stegosaurs died, and the ankylosaurs, as if like a phoenix from a fire, rose out of nowhere. It turns out the ankylosaurs were around in the Jurassic. In fact, Scylatosaurus is the a direct line to Ankyl the ankylosaurs. And so the idea here is that this is a you say, wait a minute, there's a pelosaur in the Jurassic? Yeah, there's some of the Morthor formation. I just never mentioned them because there's no toys of them. But the idea is that they were there. Stegosaurus seemed to be just a bigger deal. And then when they wiped out, the Ankylosaurus did proliferate more. But there were still Jurassic Stegosaurus in the early Jurassic, at least in China. And so this guy's one of those guys. Now, what's important about this particular one is that uh, they're only known from England. And, from, and the best one's known from marine sediment. Meaning that it served in the marine milk court. No, I'm kidding. It's, um... <laughs> Why say that? <coughs> sorry, I'm sorry. That just hit me the wrong way. My joke hurt me, so I hope it didn't hurt you. Uh, the idea here is that we, as I mentioned with Boropelta, the dinosaur mummy they found in Canada, this animal, the one they found, clearly washed off the sea and sank to the bottom of the ocean. So occasionally, very rarely, but occasionally, you can go and dig marine sediment and find dinosaurs because sometimes they'll wash off the sea. Uh, just because it's a marine environment doesn't mean the dinosaurs are swimming in the ocean. Again, all rivers go through the ocean kind of thing, right? Uh, so that's why it's such an important animal in its own right. Now, moving more to the middle Jurassic, where, where Centosaurus was, we have Metrocanthosaurus. Of course, I already did a video on this guy with the Collect A 2016 being the most scientific model I have. But I just am just in love with the Jurassic world. Hammond Legacy at Target. I don't know why. I just love this thing. It makes me so happy. And, and I always tell you that when looking at these, I'm, I'm obviously telling you this toy is more accurate than this one based on current science. But so I, I, when I say if you just like it, you'll like it, I mean that. Because I just like this. I mean, it's not terrible, but I just like it. I don't know why. So uh, moving forward, we have Gestriptospondylus. It's a fun name to say. <laughs> Gestriptospondylus. So made famous by a walking with dinosaurs. This particular figure is the Jurassic World one. Uh, not Jurassic World. This is the walking with dinosaurs figure. 
the, the BBC 1999, you know, document, the documentary kind of thing. This one is the only other model that's not one of these. That is 2007 P R O C O N Procon, a company like Collect A that's not as well known as Safari or, or Popo or Shite. But again, this, these are the only two of these guys you can find. I have not done a video on these either because one, um, I only have these two. And I'm pretty sure at some point in Jurassic World might make it just a list, but I don't know. Uh, it's claimed to fame, actually, in, in pop culture, it is in a walkway dinosaurs in the Jurassic Sea one where one of these is standing near the edge of the water and a not to scale uh, Liplorodon comes out of the water, grabs it, pulls them, pulls them into the water. Now, uh, again, I, I will mention that later on, the Liplorodon in Walking Dinosaurs was way bigger than it should have been. But also, I remember I was in school, and I remember people saying, other students saying, man, that Liplorodon thing is so big, it can eat a T-Rex. And I remember, I don't know why, but I got so angry. I'm like, that was not a T-Rex, it was your stupid spondylus. It was 20 feet long. T-Rex is like 40 feet long. You know, I remember getting really mad as a kid. Um, and speaking of that size, so a lot of these that these predators are 20 feet long, 60 feet long. Europe historically was, a, well, during the Jurassic at least, was a series of islands. The level was higher, so we see smaller dinosaurs. And it, and the idea behind that is, we you know, you and I go 20 feet for a theropod. <laughs> That's very small. But remember, this is the you know what's the longest reptile? It's like a crocodile at 20 something feet. You know, at that time, and so. If it's before paleontology went across the Atlantic to North America and found the Morrison Formation with Diplodocus and Brachys, you know, Barosaurus. And so, again, these guys are a big deal in their own right. Last but not least in this area, I thought the uh, Calabasaurus is another, is a Guanodon cousin. And, I've, and I mentioned it more in the Metrocanthosaurus video. But again, this is a guy found in England. So, uh, where we have our uh, Camptosaurus, I love the camera, yeah, they're there. Uh, the, the, the idea that they have this, essentially. And late Jurassic, we have this guy. Now these are both. This is a Baton, B-A-T-T-A-N, and this one I can't remember which one this is. This is a Collect Day as well. Collect Day, like knock it out of the park, you know. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, I was trouble saying his name is D-A-C-E-N-T-R-U-R-U-S. It's the Cetrosaurus. It means, it means like mooning or sharp tail. And, that, and, the, and the idea is that if we think of Stegosaurus, we think of Stegosaurus, right? This is one from Britain, who's almost the same size. But where Stegosaurus in North America have like big plates and then four spikes, they have half and half, and those plates are smaller. And again, it's one of the first Stegosaurus known to science. And it's in the British Museum on a wall right, right now. And so, again, we're seeing, again, similar ecologies where there were more than one Stegosaur id in the world. So, going to the Jurassic Coast, Bahama, Jamaica, ooh, not kidding. Uh, the Jurassic Coast, which is made famous by the Mary Anning. Um, in science, we have, we have the father of chemistry, the father of this, the father of that. Uh, Marianne is considered the mother, or at least a, I don't know how to frame it, but uh, she was looking for ammonites. Now, this is an ammonite, and here is the actual Jurassic ammonite, a fossil of one. And so, uh, the, I always mention Marianne and say, you know who she is, because she sold seashores, sorry, she sold, I have a lisp, she sold seashells by the seashore. And you're like, no, James, that was Sally. No, it was Mary. Sally rhymes better, and we're all lazy. But she's the one who was selling ammonite fossils. Not this kind. She was selling better than this. But the, the funder of research, essentially. And so ammonites are fine there. And, of course, belemnites, which, if you look at their, where most like, ammonites have a hard shell on the outside, belemnites have an internal shell. It's like, like a bullet, basically. And uh, these guys are found throughout the Jurassic. I, I've been to the Sundance Formation uh, right before the Morrison in, in Wyoming. Uh, the, the Crosby Ranch, as well as the uh, the, the Moa Ranch in Western Wyoming, or Hewlett. And so Bellamites are pretty abundant, very, very, very cool fossils. Other animals we have are Ithiosaurs. Now, the Ithiosaurs are these guys here. Ithio means fish, source means lizard. And so Ithiosaurs, and I keep, oh, right, names. So this guy is Safari 2010. This is one of my, like, favorites. It's like an you know, iconic Ithiosaur. It's like the, there's no perfect look. <laughs> but if there was, it'd be this, this guy right here. Uh, and it's eating an ammonite, which is awesome. I uh, also want to point out this one, which is a special one, and this is important because this is the, the name, Tim, I always to say it, Timnodontosaurus. It's another kind of ichthyosaur. This one is seen giving birth, and again, at the museum in Houston, there's a fossil. Well, it, it's not as happy as this one, the baby's still inside, and there's several babies inside. And so ichthyosaurs are reptiles that breathe air, 
So they're like dolphins, but where dolphins have blowholes, they have nostrils. And so one of them were common on the southwestern, no, yeah, southwestern coast. And you know, you can go to the coast and see, or not see, they're not just like everywhere. But if you're fossil hunting with the like the volunteer groups and all that, there are ichthyosaur vertebra you can find. I have none in my collection, but they're like fish vertebra, but more blocky. And so that's the thing to really point out is that so these guys are an example of convergent evolution because they look like dolphins, but they're not dolphins. Another animal we have in this region are the plesiosaurs. The plesiosaurs being the plesiosaurs itself, and this is a pop of course. Uh, this one is a collect A. It's Unburosaurus. So these are different kinds of marine reptiles. And again, these guys are, are well known. Mary Annie knows them too as well. The Pliosaurus, I plural on. I will mention in short that in Jurassic, no, I keep saying Jurassic World, in Walkman Dinosaurs, they overestimated size as well as the fish Leeds Ithys. Leeds Ithys is the largest fish that I'm aware of. <laughs> That's not a shark in, in, in Earth history. It is, uh, at the time of Walkman Dinosaurs, it was estimated to be about 80 feet long, like blue whale sizes. I'm reading more papers are saying more, there was an overestimation for both of these animals. Uh, this one, I, if you go to Amazon, there is a, if you type in like prehistoric sea scorpion, there's these little kits you can get of five or ten figures. Uh, this was in one of those kits. There was no particular company name. But I will say that uh, I wish there were a bigger Leeds at these fossil toy. Sorry. Uh, the only other toy I found was a, um, it was like a anime looking kind of thing. It, was, it, it didn't look scientific. So I was like, mm, I'm good. But other than that, this is the only one out there. And of course, I mentioned before with the, with the 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 Dakotasaurus, the Dakotasaurus, Dakotasaurus. This is one of those crop, marine crocodiles that are not crocodiles. This one's particular is a Safari 2018. It's called Plesiosuchus. So it means it's, so Plesiosaurus means near lizard because they are reptiles, but they're not like lizards. And Plesiosuchus means near a croc because it looks like a croc, but it's not really a croc. Uh, but the closest thing to it will be a crocodile. So you know. So these are all animals found on the Jurassic Coast. And I mean, not just, like, I mean, you go to the coast and you dig on the hillside, but also that region is called the Jurassic Coast because it was the Jurassic Ocean, right, right, right? Oh, and last but not least, another same group pack, the Pliosaurus. So we have, everyone knows, a Pleurodon for all the movies and TV, but Pliosaurus is also the name of the group of these short-necked Plesiosaurus. So kind of a big deal, only one toy of it, interesting. The last mile is we're going from the Jurassic to the Cretaceous, and particularly early Cretaceous. I'm going to mention first the Isle of Wight, which is really a big deal. Now, we, I mentioned Iguanodon at some point, but where's Iguanodon? There's Iguanodon right there. And then there's this little guy here named Atelosaurus. So essentially imagine Iguanodon is like uh, a wildebeest, and Atelosaurus, I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> this is a two, eight, 2018 Atelosaurus. That's a Mattel, the guy from the Iguanodon. He, um, this is kind of like a gazelle to that wildebeest. They're similar, but not the same species, right? And there's, of course, a big deal that there's a predator named Neovenator, and I have one toy of it here, there's one over there, but Jurassic World's making a new Neovenator figure, so I'm gonna go over that when we get that guy. But Neovenator means uh, new hunter, Neo, like, like the Matrix, no. Uh, actually, Neo means new, and Venator means hunter. And so we know these guys, oh my god, my friend Hunter, you know, they can uh, nature. Anyway, uh, so, unscripted relations. So these guys are found interacting with each other, for the most part. And I'm going to tell you how to know that in a minute. But, again, there's another animal called Polycanthus, this is another nodosaur, made famous for walking with dinosaurs. Uh, one guy you don't, you never hear of really often is Eotyrannus. This is the only figure that I'm aware of, of Eotyrannus out there. This is a... Once again, collect day. I must say, this video has become a uh, unsponsored endorsement of collect day. Because I always complain that, not complain, but remark that we get Tyrannosaurus every year, we get Stegosaurus every year, we get Triceratops every year. But collect day is thought of unusual species that are not, not unusual, less famous species. So, as you're seeing with this video, it's clearly clear. Uh, so, Eotyrannus is a Tyrannosaur ancestor. Uh, from the early Cretaceous period, and it's unusual in that you would associate a Tyrannosaur with North America or Asia, because that's where most of the research focuses, right? But it turns out, before Eotyrannus even, there's an animal called, I forgot to pull out, it's called Pro Proceratosaurus. So I've mentioned it before, I can't find it, reach, I see a monolophosaurus. Hold on a minute. Let's 
see, let's see, let's see. Did I move it? Oh my goodness. You really have a lot of toys when you can't find. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. I'm like, I know it's there. And you're like, James, would you edit this out? No, this is this is YouTube gold. Sorry, did you get this by next? So here is a pro stratosaurus. So this guy would have been about like that tall, sitting next to me. Little guy. Uh, and it turns out this little crest you see here, uh, if they found the tip of it, the top of the skull is kind of missing. Uh, the name pro stratosaurus implies, as it was stopped ability, that the first dinosaur with horns ever found was not Triceratops or any other horn ceratopsian, was actually Ceratosaurus in Lake Jurassic, North America. And Ceratosaurus means horned lizard because they have a nose horn, these two crests here, or it's really more of a nose crest or growth, uh, which is why I'd imagine if they found Triceratops first, it would be called Cerato something tops or whatever, you know. Anyway, so finding this animal in late Jurassic North America, finding this animal in early Jurassic England, the assumption was, well, he has a nose crest, and so does that one, and we'll see relatives. There's more to it than that, but they were actually wrong. This is closer to a Tyrannosaur. Um, in fact, this is one of the Tyrannosaurus' oldest ancestors. I know there's a competition between this guy in, in, in England, and this guy in China, Guanlong, and they're just going to like have an arm wrestling match. But the big picture to me is that we think of Tyrannosaurus as being giant animals, and yes, the last ones were, but for most of the Jurassic or and Crete early Cretaceous, Tyrannosaurs are pretty small dinosaurs, and they were they were uh, essentially their overlords were the Allosaurid Percarnatid groups. Those those were in charge, and these guys are small. It wasn't until they were wiped out that these guys replaced them as the large predators. So the Tyrannosaurus, as you know, the really giant ones like T. Rex, Diplodocus, Tarbosaurus. Those are really like a last minute add on <laughs> to the situation. But Strat Pro Stratosaurus found in Gloucester, England, is kind of the big deal. Appreciate it. Now, another dinosaur I've never mentioned before, I don't think I have, is this guy, these little guys here called, this is a Collect A as well, Hypsilophodont family, 2012, made in China. And so Hypsilophodonts are essentially like sheep or gazelles of dinosaurs. They're these little bitty guys. Now, normally I don't like buying toys with a base like this. But they're so tiny, <laughs> they're so little, and they're seen here as a little family unit. And so they find these guys there too. And so when I, when I mention ornithropods, I often the birds for dinosaurs. I'm often about you know the iguanodonts, the hadrosaurs. This is another branch of that group that are underrepresented in the toy world. We're almost done. So <coughs> I'm getting tired too. So here's the thing: this is ornithocyrus. I'm waiting to get the Jurassic World ornithocyrus figure to go for more. <laughs> he made sorry. Everyone's made famous by walking dinosaurs. So it was at one point considered to be the largest pterosaur known. Again, okay, plus a koala kind of holds that, 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 that title. But it's it a Kairos here, you know, it's, I think shown flying from like, I remember from like Brazil to North America to, to England. It has a very broad range. I mean, pterosaurs we think are intercontinental, the really big ones, by pretentious time. And so I will do a video on this guy when I get the Jurassic World into Kairos. But this is the one seen in the walking dinosaurs. Uh, the old male that was on this big journey. So we have uh, two more, and one. This one's this one that people often don't even know exists because I forgot his name. Uh, Beckel, wait, two thousand? No, no where's the where's Collect A? Look at them. They're just not out of the park. Collect A, and the name of the animal is like Beckel Spinex. So how do I frame this? <coughs> Dinosaurs like. T-Rex, Lampiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Triceratops, they've been known for a long time, over a century. And so we can see in the toys how they change over time. I mean, most of the channel is about that, how they change over time. Uh, we look like Carnotaurus, a very new new species. We kind of already have an idea how, how it works better because we have a better understanding of the anatomy. Likewise, some of the earliest dinosaurs named, they're finding all these bones, a lot of them are questioned in that the early paleontologists weren't wrong, per se. They just were finding things they'd never seen before, ever. And so they would name things here and there and go, oh, maybe it's this. So that's why Megalosaurus, like every, almost every dinosaur I've found before 1950, those thoropod, and this little bio says, thought to be a Megalosaurus, not, you know. And so this guy here is something that's from North, Amer uh, North from, from England, sorry, not from North America, 
And this is the only figure I know of it at all. And like I said, if you look, if you go to my Thoroughpot page, I'll put a link below. Scroll down, so you can see where it's from and all that. But the idea is that this is something that's not a lot of toys of it. It's not really well known. And given recent trends, I'm pretty sure Jurassic World will make a figure of it because they've been finding the most obscure things to make figures of them. But finally, I want to end on this guy here. Now, first and foremost, I want to point out this guy, this this large thing here. is a 3D printed and painted my friend Corey. He's an artist, Corey Green. Uh, claw of Baryonyx. Baryonyx literally, literally means heavy claw. So we think about with raptors or dromaeosaurs, two foot claws on the ground, the big claw on the foot hand, uh, on the, on the um, toe, inner toe. This is actually a hand claw. Now, dinosaurs did not have thumbs. Because when you say the word thumb, that means opposable, it means a lot of other stuff. In paleontology, we, look at these, that we have toes or digits, uh, phalanges. They're, you count them going out, and so it's like the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And so the first toe, which we, we would call a thumb, but you say the word thumb, it makes people think opposable, and it makes anthropologists get really mad. But the idea is that this first toe on the hand has this giant claw. It is believed that baryonyx hunted fish. And this is my, so this is like the biggest, not Jurassic World one I have. This, they're all like right there, so looking at the same thing. Yeah, that's England's and a lot of stuff over there. And so, this was Papa, of course. Uh, and so, I remember the day I got this one. I was literally at my classroom in the museum, lower level, and my right hand came to me and she was like, hey, there's a new dinosaur in the gift shop. I think it's a baryonyx. And I literally just dropped everything I was doing and I ran to the gift shop and I bought it. <laughs> you know, like an adult man should, right? Uh, so, you don't really see it much in the figure here, but the, the big claw right there is what you're seeing here. And this is kind of, you know, we think about it, we find this guy in England, we find uh, Spinosaurus in, in Africa, or in Egypt particularly. Uh, you find Nesiosaurus, not Nesiosaurus, Sucumimus in Niger, Africa. You find Irritator in Brazil. Again, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a who's who of Spinosaurus or, you know. And so Baryonyx is, of course, one of those guys. And what's really unique or cool about it is that it's, a sh it's showing that this, you know, we see the the, the, the Tyrannosaurs or the Dromaeosauroraptors, the Allosaurids. This this group are having more narrow snouts and they're eating fish. Now, are they eating more than fish? The answer is yes, because we do histology. Histology, basically look, looking at the bones, you can, you, human, watching this video, you can take your bones after you're dead, of course. If you do it before, it's very painful. And, and scan and see what minerals are in your bones. And... From that, anthropologists can tell, oh, this person probably lived in this part of the world, you know. Uh, we can take histology of fossils and go, oh, this dinosaur ate fish. Now, they eat only fish? Two things. One, we know it ate fish because there was a fish scale found in the stomach. And then two, uh, the histology shows that too for spinosaurus. Now, did they eat red meat? Yes, they would have eaten iguanodons. We found, but it implied that they were eating juvenile iguanodons. Again, the idea of finding a, an adult dinosaur predator Fighting an adult herbivore is not a thing. They're always going after the juveniles or the smaller ones because it's easier. And so this claw shows that. And when you know with the claw, that little groove right in there, the blood vessel goes through there, meaning in life there's a thief covering it like this. So if you saw Jurassic Park 3 when the Spinosaurus is attacking the, towards the end of the movie, the boat, and they all have a little cage in the, in, in the water, and it's reaching the cage and clawing them, the giant curved claws, that's the things the Spinosaurus have, basically. So Baryonyx shows that. Now, that being said, this is a longer video than I planned it to be. We will rely on information quickly. Quick for me. So, if you are still watching this, thank you. I have a surprise for you. In the comments below, I have a link to a video about British dinosaurs, and I want a lot of there's a lot of videos or documentary mockumentaries, and I'll watch them like that's not quite accurate. This was this was good. And so I'll put a link to it below, and so you can see more, if you want to know more detail, more information on these some of these species. I did mention more than they do with the documentary, and I also told stories that were not always in documentary too, so it's an option for you. If you're still here at this point, you really love learning this stuff, I want to thank you for tuning in. If you like these kind of videos on the region of the world, instead of just the animal itself, let me know. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.